Okay, uh, good day and uh, welcome everybody to this seminar about uh, Brazilian uh, challenges in uh, science and uh, innovation. Uh, we have since last year collaborated with the Swedish-Brazilian Association here in Stockholm to organize the seminar. We hope this will become a tradition right beginning uh, the semester to have the seminar, uh, take stock, see where we are. Uh, KTH has had uh, collaboration with Brazil for quite many years now and uh, is an important partner. We have important partners and important projects going on. Uh, we have uh, uh, welcome here uh, first to start uh, from our uh, Vice Rector for Global Relations, Professor uh, Stefan Oslund, uh, who will say a few words to you, uh, a welcome words to you. Please, Stefan. So, okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Mr. Ambassador, uh, uh, do you, uh, Warm welcome to all of you to KTH. Some of you, most of you have been here before. Uh, for some of you, it's perhaps the first time. Uh, KTH is Sweden's oldest, not always good to be, uh, biggest technical university, which I think you're very familiar with. Uh, international collaborations. Uh, it's very popular today among universities in the world to work internationally. Uh, and of course, that's, uh, we all say it's very important. Well, we have to do that, and, and everyone claims it's, it's really necessary. Uh, and of course, uh, I don't blame them, it's, it's of course true. Especially for a country like Sweden, which is only 10 million people. We are, well, we have some, some space, but we are very few people. So international collaborations for us is, is uh, of course, uh, one way of uh, getting in contact with, with uh, students, faculty, companies all over the world, which uh, is important not only for us, but for, for Sweden as a country. The top universities of Sweden, and we have about five, six, seven of them, are extremely important for competitiveness of Sweden and, and the future of Swedish industry, and uh, in the long term, of course, also the, the, the uh, welfare of a country. So that's, that's uh, the key, actually, to why we do international collaborations. It's not just for fun. It's not just that it's very nice that we have a number of, of, of countries uh, on, on, on the campus. Uh, so that is a little bit my, my, my view of international collaboration. And I have another view, which is, uh, is very important. It has to be, as Semida mentioned, it's a long-term aspect of it. We've been working with Brazil. I think we have a lot in common with Brazil. We have, have good institutions, we have good companies, we have companies in, in Brazil which are in Swedish in many ways, but still also Brazilian. And, and, and that's why this kind of collaboration with Brazil is so important for us as a university. It's not only for the fact that we, we collaborate with, with some universities, but it's also meeting people and meeting the Swedish industry in, in, in Brazil. Because it's not a Swedish company in that way. It's a Brazilian company with a Swedish background, which makes this kind of collaborations, this kind of relations with, with the Business Sweden, with, with the embassies, uh, both here in, in Stockholm and in, in, in Brasilia, very important. So that I'm very happy about this, and I'm very happy about the long-term aspect of it. Uh, we, haven't, we, don't, we, we mustn't really feel disappointed whether we don't get a lot of things done year one, two, three. It has to come gradually, and I think it does in this kind of project we have been, with, have, uh, in, uh, been doing with, with Brazil for a long time. So I wish you all welcome again to KTH, wish you all a, a, a fruitful seminar, and I hope to see you again. Thank you. I'm going to be chairing this session. Uh, I'm professor in energy systems uh, uh, planning here in KTH, and I lead a group, a research group called Energy and Climate Studies. Uh, I've been also coordinating this cooperation with Brazil uh, as a representative of the faculty. 
so it's very nice to see that uh, we are maybe about to have a catch-up effect uh, because we have put a lot of effort in, in the collaboration over the years, as Stefan was uh, emphasizing, and uh, we see that now we're really having many initiatives. We have many initiatives going on. So let me tell you what's going to happen now. Uh, first, we are going to have a presentation by our Brazilian ambassador to Sweden. Uh, then uh, we will actually have a presentation, not from Johanna, but from jo uh, Jonas Lindström, from the, the Swedish Resilient Chamber of Commerce in Sao Paulo. And uh, Johanna Berisma uh, Skog, who is the, the new ambas appointed by ambassador of Sweden to Brazil, she will show up. She had another appointment, but she will come at some point and, and uh, we will introduce her. She will have a chance to, to meet you. Uh, she will be leading the Swedish cooperation on the, in the embassy in the coming years. Uh, and uh, uh, then we're going to have also time for a few questions from the audience. Uh, and at the end, we will also have a few words by Regina Summers from Vinova and Johan Fanger from the Swedish Research Council, uh, VR, who are going to say a little bit of what Vinova and VR are doing when it comes to uh, activities with Brazilian organizations. So this is the plan for today. And uh, without further ado, I'd like to invite our ambassador, Brazilian ambassador to Sweden, uh, Mr. Nelson Tabachara. Welcome. Thank you. I hope everyone is, can, can, can hear me well. I have a my presentation will be basically to give a, a panorama of science and technology and, and innovation in Brazil as a whole. I will not go into details, but just to give an, uh, 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 some examples and uh, the platform that we have in Brazil in science technology and how through decades we arrived where we are today. Um, it's a challenge to talk about science and technology to scientists, so much, many of you will probably know much of the information that I have t today, some may not, but I'm trying to put together many different areas, things that are happening in Brazil so that we uh, to start this uh, seminar and for our discussions later. I would also ask you to excuse me, I will read because there are many numbers and, um, and information that I will have to, to read. I know it's, it's not my preferred choice. So I had, and at my age, I, I, I was coming here to say, what should I make with big letters and no, you know, eyeglasses or, you know, with glasses and a smaller. I did both, so uh, to make sure I read everything, okay. So without much ado, let me then start. So Brazil accounts for a broad and dynamic system of science production. We have around 230,000 researchers who, whose work generates more or less 30,000 articles and documents published in international magazines per year. That represents roughly more or less 2% of the world scientific academic production. And this, per this percentage puts Brazil in 13th place in the overall of science ranking in the world which is a comfortable position if compared with some countries with greater position, such as Russia and Netherlands, for example. Two decades ago, our participation was only 0.6% of the world's production. This is a basic uh, numbers. The other important fact to remark is that investments in science, technology, and innovation by the federal government have grown at rates above the country's economic growth since the year 2000 when the investments were 5.8 billion reais. In the year 2016, the investments in these areas by the federal government reached 35, 34 billion, about $8 billion at the current exchange, 33.5% higher than the year 2010. New figures are about to be released, though budget restraints in Brazil may have curbed slightly these numbers, but we're still in a good ranking. Indeed, in the 2016 UNESCO report of the state of science in the world stressed that Brazil as a whole invested about 23 billion US dollars in research and development, something comparable by investments of Spain and Italy 
in absolute terms. Another striking feature of the Brazilian science and technology system is that the public sector is responsible for the largest investment, that is 55%, something common to almost all developing countries. Approximately three quarters of the scientists are still working in an academic field. And this large public sector's objective is to advance science, technology in fields that great amount of investment is needed, such as big projects that mainly the state invests in that, which is nuclear and space programs. So this will indicate, in this, in this uh, specific situation here, to, to, to show you about the solid platform of science and technology in Brazil. So these two programs, which are very big, the Brazilian nuclear program dates back to 1956, when Brazil started its centrifuge process of enriching uranium. Today, the research nuclear fuel factor in the state of Rio de Janeiro meets a considerable part of the country's demand for nuclear energy. Some 3,000 installations and equipments in operation in Brazil use radioactive material or nuclear sources for industrial production, health, research, and mainly in chemical areas. The Brazilian Navy is building a country's first nuclear submarine. The University of Campinas, the University of Sao Paulo, and the National Institute of Space Research, INPE, are conducting nuclear fusion, as Mr. From, uh, uh, Hendler, just talk to him, he knows about this, 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 this project in Brazil. Is this fusion region and have three tokamaks, which are experimental uh, re fusion reactors install installed in their facilities. <clears throat> then there is the Brazilian Spherical Tokamak e Experiment, ETE, that was designed and built by the National Institute of Space Research, which is also responsible for its operation. Brazil is also one of the three countries in Latin America with a synchrotron-type laboratory in operation, and a new synchrotron is being developed, supposedly more advanced, the Sirius, uh, Sirius, um, Synchrotron. Regarding the Brazilian space program, it's another problem wor program worth of mention, and it's the most advanced space program in Latin America at this stage, with significant sources to launch rockets and to manufacture satellites. This area goes way back. In 1984, Brazil launched its first national rocket with self-attitude system guidance, and in 1990, the first communications microsatellite was launched. In 1997, the Brazilian Space Agency signed an agreement with the U.S. National Aeronautic and Space Administration, also known as NASA, to provide parts for the International Space Station. That put Brazil in the level of very few countries, where only 15 partners that contribute to the IS, uh, the uh, International Space Station back then. Now things have maybe grew more, but we were one of the first 15 countries that uh, helped the International Space Station to be built. This agreement enabled Brazil to participate in the ISS with national research projects, and consequently, we trained our first ast astronaut. So in, on March 2006, Colonel Marcos Pontes went abroad to the, aboard the Soyuz spacecraft and became the first Brazilian astronaut to orbit the Earth. And as you probably know, astronaut Pontes is now our current Minister of Science, Technology and Innovation in Brazil. And at the ministry, uh, the, pin the ministry plays a central role in the country's promotion and advancement of science, technology, innovation, and communication with its research unit, units, related entities, and social organizations. All are aimed to a sustainable development, improving the quality of life of Brazilian citizens. With this person, purpose in mind, the ministry launched the National Strategy for Science, Technology, and Innovation from 2016 to 2022, which is a medium-term guidance document for the implementation of public, public policies in science and technology. In the document, the promotion of innovation is highlighted as crucial for increasing productivity and thus the Brazil's global competitiveness. The document also lists 12 strategic issues to be prioritized. So aerospace and defense, water, food, biomes and bioeconomics, social sciences and technologies, climate, economy and digital society, energy, strategic minerals, nuclear, health, and other convergent and enabling technologies. I will, I will uh, make a pause here. I will send this to Samira if you want, 
uh, there's a lot of things, numbers, maybe I can send it to you and whoever is interested can have this text. So the document also presents the expected, expected national budget growth from R&D to GDP so as, so as to reach 2% of the GDP in 2020 as well of number of increase the number of researchers per millions from 7 and 709 which was the number of researchers per million inhabitants in 2010 to 3000 in 2022 so the expectation that when we will jump from 700 to 3000 to 2022 the federal government has recently also launched the Brazilian nanotechnology initiative the IBN which will be the main strategic program for nanotechnology incentive in Brazil. It aims to create, integrate, and strengthen governmental actions to promote scientific and technological development in nanotechnology. The initiative lists the following priority themes, nanomaterials and nanocomposites, nanosensors and nanodevices, bio-based nanomaterials, nanopharmaceuticals, and nanomedicine nanosecurity, environment, agribusiness and food, energy, defense and national security, and mobility and urban infrastructure. So nanotechnology will be one of the new highlights that are be, will be um, incentive, to receive more incentive so that we grow more on that area. Within the scope of innovation national system, the federal government has put into practice numerous policies. I can highlight here the launch of several programs and initiatives to support the internationalization of innovation, environments, and the training, acceleration, and internationalization of startups, such as Start, Start Out Brazil program, Land to Land platform, Startup Brazil program, the Innovative program, the program FINEP Startup, Startup Industry Connection program, Innovation Center, the Technologies Demonstration Laboratory for Smart City, among others. So there's a lot of focus on this innovation, the startups to give it more a boost, whatever the government can to, uh, to boost that, that sector. If, uh. Later this year, the federal government also plans to send to the National Congress a legal framework project for startups. The purpose is to create a more favorable environment for small and medium technology-based companies, which today are estimated at more or less 15,000 in operation. With regards to overall participation of the business sector and the innovation national system, the National Confederation of Industry, the CNI, which I think Jonas knows very well, that's it's his, his counterpart in Brazil, the Brazilian Service Support for Micro and Small Enterprise, CEBRAE, the Business Mobilization for Innovation, MIE, and many other are being the main actors in these efforts regarding startups and innovation. So we're, we're having a, a big national, at all levels, uh, convergence to that. And within this broader innovation environment, a key role is also played by Amprotec. Amprotec is the National Association of Entities Promoting Innovative Enterprises. It is, in a way, uh, an entity that uh, is an, uh, has, has uh, their associates are mainly science parks and other innovative uh, entities uh, uh, directed to innovation. But with a focus on, on pr promoting innovation enterprise, so bringing technology, science and technology, putting it and making matchmaking so that they can, the enterprise can benefit from all this. Which, which brings together more than 350 members, including incubator companies, technology parks, accelerators, educational institutions and research, public bodies and other entities related to entrepreneurship and innovation. How, how am I in terms of time? If, my five minutes, okay. So I'll have to rip half of this. But, it, but, uh, in a, but since I, it will circulate, I, I will try to put the most important uh, no information and then uh, no it's not, I'm not very far in fact the National Association of Innovative Enterprise Promoting Entities the Ministry of Science and Technology is the National Council for Scientific and Technological Development CNPQ you probably heard I know that the Brazilians know very well the CNPQ have recently launched on August 12 during the innovation summit in the city of Florianópolis in Brazil the program mapping 
of innovative enterprise generation mechanisms. The survey conducted between September 2008 and March 2019 shows that Brazil has 363 innovative business incubators and 57 accelerators. The mapping also estimates that in 2007, the 3,694 incubated companies in Brazil were responsible for the generation of 14,500 14, jobs and collected more or less 110 million uh, reais in taxes and profited 551 million. There are more numbers that I will jump, they will, you will probably will get it later on. But I, I would like to just to, to, to end my, 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 my presentation is uh, mentioning the Brazil-Sweden cooperation in technology and innovation, which has been very fruitful, especially in the scope of high-level group of uh, aeronautics and the innovation and technology steering group, the Getachi and the, and the, uh, the high-level LHLG, we call it in Brazil GAN, it's a group de alto nível, it's a high-level group, it's HLG, in aeronautics, which is, uh, it was inspired by the, the Gripen, the Embraer and Saab project, and Sweden presented us with this um, proposal that we make a high-level group in aeronautics and to see spillovers and what other kinds of things we can do together in aeronautics. And it's a high level because it's in the ministries of, uh, of um, science and technology. We had the Ministry of, of Industrial and, uh, and Trade, but now it's going to be the Ministry of Science and Technology who's going to take over uh, its position at the high level group. So uh, in, on, 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 the, on, the, on, the, on the Swedish side, you have the Ministry of Science and Technology here and Innovation. And there is also Air Force and companies like Embraer and Saab. And it's, it's, it's a big group. I don't know if you, if, if you had a chance to participate in any one of these high-level meetings. So, uh, and then you have the, another uh, technology steering group under the agreement that we have of cooperation in science and technology with, with Sweden, which is a, it's a bigger uh, cooperation. And it has small, of course, uh, specific programs that are bilateral and they are constantly, it's, it's, it's the, the umbrella where we can do official science and technology cooperation. And just recently, well, some, some years ago, we had an addendum that included also innovation, and not just science and technology, but also innovation. So, and this group is working, where both of them are gonna, are gonna meet here in Sweden in October. It's gonna be a high level. The, the executive secretary of our Ministry of Science and Technology will be here as, as a Brazilian high level. Uh, authority and of course on the Swedish side we'll probably have the minister or his vice minister. So among the activities set out in the bilateral action plan of 2019-2020 in common agreements between Vinova and the Brazilian funding agency with particular interest in biotechnology are events of matchmaking between research institutions and companies. And this will happen also next month there will be a Swedish Innovation Week in Brazil and in October, we're going to have the Brazilian Innovation Week in, in Sweden. So this has been on both sides, and it's been very dynamic. It has engaged a lot, not only our embassy here, but the Swedish embassy in, uh, in Brazil. I probably, the ambassador, Joanna, will probably uh, have well, say something about that, because I, I think she will be there in Brazil. She's going to arise in September. And I think the first big task will be this Swedish uh, Innovation Week in Brazil. And it's going to start uh, on the second half of September, if I'm not wrong. Okay. Regarding this latter, the one we're talking about, the Brazilian Innovation Week in Sweden, it's going to be the second. We already had that one in 2017, so this is going to be the second edition. And it's to be held in October 7 to October 11 here in Stockholm. And the focus will be on sustainable mining based on the Memorandum of Understanding of Cooperation on Sustainable Mining between Brazil and Sweden, which was signed in 2016. So it's a specific agreement for sustainable mining. Another initiative has been the recent proposal by the Brazilian government to negotiate and hopefully signing an agreement framework for cooperation science technology innovation, whose aim will be to develop, facilitate the cooperation between scientific and technological institutions. It's apart from the, f the, the big one that we have, there's a new one which will probably have a scope that will include more entities when, within that uh, 
So this, is, this has been put on the table. We just sent it about uh, two or three months ago to the Swedish government, and we're waiting for the Swedish reaction to see if that uh, is of, of interest of Sweden, and then we can start negotiating the terms or adjusting to whatever the conditions that both sides will need. So this was a very brief panorama. I am sorry if I left things out, but it was impossible to say in 15 minutes <laughs> everything. But this is what we have here. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. It was an interesting panorama, really, uh, also showing um, some of the key uh, investments that Brazil has made in the... No, no, please stay. Uh, let's give a chance for one question from the audience before we move on, if there are no questions. I then... I have a question. Okay. Uh, I have a difficult question for the investors. Okay. Um, <laughs> Uh, we have uh, followed the uh, development and we maybe if I stay, maybe it's going into the other. This is this is the weapon of the ambassador. When they give tough questions, we we start interfering in the audio. <laughs> uh, no, but uh, you talked yes. about yeah. very well the, the, the major investments and actually not only the investments that were made in science and technology, but also the, the results where we have seen an uh, exponential increase in the, in the production of uh, uh, academic results in Brazil. Uh, now with uh, the new government, we have, had, we have seen some cuts in, the, in those areas. So what, how do, should we read that development? What yeah. would, would that yes, as? well, that's one of the things that I said when, we, when I saw, talked about the, the overall uh, budget and investments in science technology up to 2018 we had a good record now we're, ha we're going through a, a, well no, it's not from today but there's a crisis there's a, a budget crisis in brazil my ministry was 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 had a big uh, containment of of, uh, of its financial resources everyone is as we say tightening the the belt we have to do i don't know what is uh, precisely what will be the effect what uh, one thing that we says is to maintain everything we can. I just read a news yesterday or the day before that uh, the minister Marcos Pontes went to see the minus, minister of finance to to try to see how much he can unblock, because this contingency plan has much of the resources are are there. They are assigned to the science and technology, but they are blocked because of this of this uh, financial uh, restrictions that we have in our through the through the government. So. And he's been there, so I know that he is fighting to get his budget is back as soon, back on, uh, on track. It is important, everyone knows, the Minister of Finance knows, the President knows it's, that science and technology is, is, is crucial. But I don't know, I don't have uh, the exact figures, but I hope it doesn't affect too much. I hope that it's just one of those valleys, ups and downs that we already had. But science and technology, as what I showed you a little bit, is to see that this, the platinum science and technology was used solid. Many, uh, uh, I didn't put here numbers, but the private investment science and technology is also high. Even the private are, are, are having trouble financing. So everyone is having problem financing. I hope that this, this, this crisis is over, is over soon so that things can go back on track. Okay. That's my wish. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Can thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'd now like to invite. Uh, Is this correct? Okay. Mr. Ambassador, Professor uh, Östlund and KTH, thank you for the invitation. It's a pleasure being here. Um, Yes, I'm Jonas Lindström, the Managing Director of the Swedish Brazilian Chamber of Commerce in Sao Paulo. So, it's an interesting title. Uh, new challenges in Brazil, the role of science innovation. New indicates that there were some already before, and now we have some new on top of those challenges. Um, so, 
of course, it's a, a tough timing to talk about uh, Brazilian relations to, to to Sweden or actually to the rest of the world. I came to Stockholm one week ago, and it's amazing how much there has been on media, Swedish media and European media about Brazil. Uh, however, I was born an optimist. I intend to stay an optimist. Uh, uh, this is not a political seminar, far from that. But let me give you three uh, <coughs> bullet points before I start my presentation about the companies and the business in Brazil. Some good news, actually. Three good news before I start to calm some of you down who also have been following the news the last week. Number one, Brazil is still a democracy with strict roles for the executive, judiciary and legislative uh, branches. Number two, Bolsonaro is a very controversial person. Yes. Uh, but uh, he does not have unrestricted power. In fact, less power than the president in the United States. There's very much many regulations in Brazil around this. And number three, media loves to hate people like Donald Trump, like Bolsonaro. And it's my feeling that sometimes selling scary he um, headings is more important than to go to serious uh, facts, scientific uh, facts from s serious uh, sources. But yes, it is hard to explain Brazil. As you know, it's a continent, it's not a small country. Uh, in terms of size, 17 times bigger than Sweden, 200 million people. And uh, it's like explain, uh, explaining Brazil to a foreigner, it's like explaining Europe to a Brazilian. There are some differences between Norway and Turkey and Sweden and Greece. So it's never good to generalize. Uh, I always usually get the question, but what do the Swedish companies say? I mean, my opinion in all due respect, but it's interesting if you ask the Swedish companies that have been present for some of them more than 100 years in Brazil. Actually, this year, Electrolux is celebrating 100 years in Brazil. SKF has been for 100 years and the list is long. Uh, ASEA, that is now ABB, has been there for 100 years too. Uh, so that's why we have worked a lot with our business climate service. Every year we send out some 35 questions to those companies. Uh, we pick the 100 biggest ones, and last year we had 80 answers. So this is the report from November last year, it's on our website. So I recommend you to open it. And uh, so this was sent out after the elections last year, and I can say that actually the result was pretty optimistic. During the campaign, uh, Bolsonaro and his economic team uh, were promising reforms and a more business-friendly agenda. So, of course, the companies were uh, optimistic in November, December last year when the survey was sent out. Uh, then, the first semester of 2019, uh, the reform agenda was not as fast as we had hoped for. There is a Congress, there is a Senate. Like I said, uh, the president cannot change a country by, by himself, so he noticed that it's not so easy in Brazil to negotiate with the politicians. Uh, so the, the confidence went down. I would say May, June, uh, companies were not as, as, as... Maybe April, May, not as positive any longer. But again, the reform came, the pension reform came to the Congress and passed. So again, the confidence went up. So we are sending out the, the questions now again in October and hopefully we'll get another barometer of how the feeling is. But yes, the, uh, if those reforms pass, and they most likely will, r the pension reform and the tax reform, uh, I do believe that we will see more uh, national and international investments in Brazil. In some numbers from the report, from the report, it's interesting to see that Sweden is present in so many sectors, everything from automotive to telecom to mining, um, pay, pay, uh, paper and pulp, and uh, like I said, some 200 companies. It's a long, story, long history in Brazil. Uh, we talk about the Swedish brand. We ask if it's important to show yourself as a Swedish company, and they say yes. 90% say yes, we do sell ourselves as a Swedish company. It's very important. Uh, they say that Swedes are seen as innovative, high quality, technology. Those keywords are uh, what describes Sweden in Brazil. Uh, in terms of barriers, what are your main problems? We have the taxes. 
not only the tax level, you pay lots of taxes, but the tax system itself is complicated. Uh, so you enter a new investment or a new business and you're not sure how much <laughs> will I get a profit on this or not. It's, it's very unpredictable. So that is one of the main reasons to, to look into the tax system. Maybe not to lower the taxes. Companies say we're fine paying taxes, but we want to know how much uh, will it be at the, at, the, at the end. So that's one of the reasons for this reform, which is actually uh, making great progress already. Uh, okay. Let me see. And again, yes, the Swedish name again. If you if you enter yourself, if you if you enter Brazil, saying that you're a Swedish Swedish company, Swedish technology, you do uh, have open doors. Uh, Sweden has a strong name and good reputation. People talk about uh, the World Cup in Sweden, 1958, when Pele was here. They know that Queen Sylvia uh, has a, had a Brazilian mother. So Br Sweden is still uh, something very. It's an important brand in in Brazil. Uh, in terms of, of investments in R&D, uh, unfortunately Brazil has not been uh, a country where companies invest in R&D. We do have some exceptions like uh, Ericsson and Scania and, and, and Volvo, they do have some research. But if you compare what they invest in other, most other countries, uh, have not been so big. And that's been one of Brazil's problems, of course, the famous Custo Brasil, the Brazil cost. It's not uh, cheap to, to keep uh, researchers and... and uh, all the investment that comes with the, uh, research in Brazil. So unfortunately they have put a lot in Asia, even in Mexico has been cheaper than Brazil. And again, the new government with Paulo Guedes as a Minister of Finance is looking into this. They want more investments in Brazil. There are also some, some regulations that you need, you have to invest some part of your turnover in R&D. Uh, that's, that's from the government to, to force the companies to do some R&D in Brazil too. Uh, but, but by history, as you know, it's been an uh, industry country. The kind of Swedish companies go there and they, they produce uh, and sell to the domestic market. So they're on the question, why, do, why are you in Brazil? Why did you come from the first? And the answer is because of the internal market, get access to the internal market. That's why they are there. Uh, also about research, uh, companies complain about the IPR regulations uh, that needs to be looked into. It takes a long time to get the patent and when you get it, it's already uh, out of date. Uh, corruption has gone down, it's been a problem in Brazil, still is, but uh, the Swedish companies say it's not the main problem. Again, taxes and IPR and bureaucracy are far bigger obstacles than and corruption. Um, okay, that's something about the industry. Um, in terms of uh, Team Sweden, uh, we have the embassy in Brasilia. In Sao Paulo we have the Chamber of Commerce, uh, Business Sweden and the Consulate. And we all work very well together. It's kind of a role model for many other countries where the roles are not so clear. In Brazil, it's very, very clear. We talk to each other every fortnight by, by phone, telephone conference. So we know which companies are coming in, which delegations, what can we do as a chamber, what can the embassy do. So when a company comes or a delegation, it feels they, they will receive by, with open arms from all of us, which is very important, of course. Uh, and we're very happy to Johanna Brisma is coming now, a new ambassador. Peron Yelmbon has been there for five years. Uh, lots, uh, great ambassador. Lots of work, of course, with the Gripen deal, uh, and uh, that is the biggest deal ever. Sweden, Brazil, and Brazilian, Brazilian government buying 36 uh, fire jets from from Saab, as you know. The first one flew a few days ago here in Linköping. Uh, the triple helix model always comes up in Brazil when we talk to researchers and also companies. Um, they want to know more about that. It's two very strong, thick walls between academia and companies in, in Brazil and the public sector. So they want to learn more about that. So some, many delegations have been to, to Sweden visiting science parks, visiting universities to, to listen how, they, how this can be improved in Brazil. There are many, many good ideas. Uh, good research projects in Brazil that nobody knows about. They never come to the market. So 
that is something they work a lot with. And choosing Marcus Pontius as a Minister of uh, Innovation, Technology and uh, Science was, in my, in my opinion, a, a good choice. That was something Bolsonaro won uh, lots of votes on. He said, I, w I would put people at the ministers that know their business. So why not put an engineer or a scientist as the Minister of, uh, of Science? And um, of course, that was something really much appreciated by the population. And as far as I know, he started well. He's a good friend of Christoph Fuglsang uh, here at KTH. Talking about Team Sweden again, we had Christoph Fuglsang at, at our chamber a little bit more than one year ago. He came as a KTH guest and Saab was involved. Team Sweden was involved and he gave a presentation at the chamber. Uh, the, actually, the first one we transmitted live uh, via Facebook video. So many members saw it and and uh, it was a great event. Uh, the Innovation Weeks, as the Ambassador mentioned, is something also very big now. Started, I think, seven years ago. Something small, few events around Brazil. But this year we have events all over Brazil, many cities. The Embassy is responsible, but with lots of support from us at the Chamber and Business Sweden, the consulates, and any other player that would like to participate in innovation events in terms of Sweden-Brazil relations. So we look, look forward to receiving many of you in Brazil in a couple of weeks. And, uh, of course, uh, Hegina will talk more about uh, all those projects and all the cooperations that are going on. Pretty much that from me. Any questions? Thank you, Jonas. Uh, I have a question. Yes. about the res uh, pushing the, the, the companies to do more research, uh, particularly in how if we consider the Swedish companies then, many of them are placed there, but as you said, are, came in a, in a different context um, to produce and, and take part in the, in the national market, particularly in Brazil during the 30s with the in import substitution policies of the government, but now being pushed actually to do some of the research in Brazil. And uh, we have seen some movement, but then kind of it slowed down. How do you think we could collaborate with the Swedish companies? With, in which forms for actually pushing in that direction? I think we need to listen to them. Uh, we had an event not long ago at the chamber where someone said, okay, all those startups, it's great to have big seminars, startups presenting their ideas, but did anyone ask the companies what they need? So he was seeing the other way around. Uh, there are so many good ideas out there, so many creative startups, but maybe there's no one looking for that solution right, by, right then. And then they don't su survive because they don't have the cash flow to maintain the company. So we are doing something on that already. We're talking to some of the 10 big companies, Scania, Volvo, Ericsson, you know them all, B ABB, to see what are your headaches right now? How can we help in Team Sweden? Uh, so that, I think, it's one way to go. And of course, also talk to the public sector in terms of, of uh, uh, financial support. There are many institutions in Brazil supporting that, and many of the Swedish companies don't even know about these institutions. So information is very important. I think that's also something to do during the Innovation Weeks. Mm -hmm. Okay, is there a question from the audience? If not, yes, okay. Yes. Some months ago, uh, in the news, that something in this direction to alleviate taxes or uh, tributation and so on. Do you know what uh, if there is any uh, change in this direction? Or what's, what is the different? Uh, what was different? Was discussed? Okay. Okay, the question was about the, the double uh, taxation agreement that was signed in, in Sao Paulo in March, actually, this year. Uh, Yes, and the companies called me the day after. What's happening? How can we take benefit from this uh, agreement? But in fact, it's not up and running yet. It has to be, um, what do you call it? Uh, um, go to the Congress, ratified in the Congress, right? Um, in Brazil and in Sweden. But it, it's a step in the right direction. Many countries also called the embassy and congratulated Sweden on, on this uh, progress because it's 
everything is going in the right direction, but again, has to be the, si the final signature is not there. And we did an event at the chamber a few weeks uh, ago, also on the on the topic, and two major law firms from São Paulo were there, and they said uh, yes, it, it will be go, go into uh, action soon, but don't adjust yet. Uh, your 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 uh, your bookkeeping uh, due to this uh, agreement, but it was very very positive. Okay, uh, I wanted to uh, thank you, Jonas. Thank, thank you, Samida. Thank you.